Friends, welcome to Colonial Park, United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Please let us know of your participation today by signing in on our online attendance pad or by commenting on Facebook or YouTube or by contacting the church office just to simply let us know of your involvement. It is good to know that we truly aren't speaking to an empty sanctuary, but reaching out beyond the walls of the building. Few announcements, uh, most of which are in your bulletin. This week you will be receiving a Lenten packet in the mail if you have not already received it. Um, for this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. Our Ash Wednesday service will be online and you should have received a packet that explains that a little bit more as well as having a bulletin in it and a packet of ashes. If you are in need of this Lenten packet or have not received any of the materials, please contact the church office before Wednesday so that we can make sure that you have that. Also, if you prefer, Pastor Scott and I will be offering the imposition of ashes um, in a drive through fashion. We will be masked and ask you to be masked as well, but you won't need to leave your car. You can roll down the window. We'll be gloved and we'll give you the mark of ashes on Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m. here in front of the church. So please, if that is something that is meaningful for you and interests you, please come by between 4 and 6 to receive ashes on your forehead or on your hand if you're uncomfortable with it being on your forehead. Also this week, Tuesday night, will be men's spirituality at 6.15. So if you are participating in that, please contact Pastor Scott to make sure that you have login information and can participate in that on Tuesday night. Um, additionally, um, we will have our regular activities this week, including Bible study on Thursday and our Tuesday night discussion group. Um, also of note in your bulletin, we on February 25th, we will be having a takeout ham dinner. Um, it, you need to have tickets for that or need to have your reservations in ahead of time. Um, it, no walk-ups will be allowed. As far as we can tell, we will be making 300 dinners and already have about half of those sold. So you will want to call the church office or go online and make sure that you have um, your ham dinner and uh, know how to pick that up and all of that. So you can find out those details in your bulletin. We are entering Lent, so just a reminder that next Sunday is the first Sunday in Lent, and we will be celebrating Holy Communion that day. So you will want to have your communion elements there in your home, um, being ready to begin our Lenten journey together. A special thank you today to those who helped to make the service possible to Pastor Scott and Anthony Halbert for music, to Kathy Neely for all of her behind the scenes work, to John Batari for helping us with sound, and today a special thank you to Helen Ferguson for being our lay reader. All of that being said, my friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Friends, let us join in our call to worship. Gathering in this sacred time, we anticipate new wonders each week. Wherever we are, when two or three are gathered to worship, a Holy Spirit is present. Open our eyes to witness the fantastic love and wondrous joy waiting to be revealed, even this day, even in this moment. We will want to linger and camp in this sacred space, but when we leave today, may our hearts be open to all the wonders of God's beautiful world. Friends, let us pray. O Holy One, on mountain tops and valley floors, you reveal to us the light of your love. Our heart's desire is to bask in the amazing glory of the divine presence. With each encounter, we are changed and transformed. Draw us nearer that we might receive a double portion of your Holy Spirit. Help us, O Holy One, to live our lives as a reflection of divine glory. May we walk among our siblings and friends as a blessing, bearing light into dark places, hope to displace despair, and love that casts out hate. Our world is hurting, and we need the followers of Jesus to follow more closely. Maybe then we will hear your voice speaking to us and saying, listen to my child, the beloved. Amen.
Friends, God alone is righteous. God alone is perfect. God alone is judge. Yet this holy, righteous God comes to us in love to save us. So rejoicing in God's grace, let us confess our sin together. Let us join in our prayer of confession. Forgive us, God, when we linger too long by the waters and on the mountaintops, enthralled with the glory that flows from you. When we fail to listen to your voice, leading and guiding us, shake us from our contentment and send us forward endowed with your power. Amen. My friends, hear the good news. The God of Elijah, the God of Moses, and the God of Jesus desires mercy more than sacrifice and a contrite heart rather than burnt offerings. Love God and do the right thing and forgiveness shall be your friend and mercy your true companion. Amen.
Let us pray. Speak to us, O Lord our God, and let the fire of your spirit burn brightly in our hearts. Open our minds to receive the wisdom of the law, the hope of the prophets, and the life of the gospel. Jesus Christ, your living word. Amen. The lesson from the Hebrew scriptures today comes from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 to 14. Listen for the word of God. Now it came about when the Lord was about to bring Elijah up by a whirlwind to heaven, that Elijah left Gilgal with Elisha. And Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Then the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel went to Elisha and said to him, Are you aware that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, Yes, I am aware. Say nothing about it. And Elijah said to him, Elisha, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Then the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho approached Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he answered, Yes, I know, say nothing about it. And Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Now fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood opposite them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Jordan. And Elijah took his coat, folded it, and struck the waters, and they were divided here and there, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask me what I should do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. He said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. And as they were walking along and talking, behold, a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire, and they separated the two of them. Then Elijah went up by a whirlwind to heaven, and Elisha was watching it, and he was crying out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen, and he did not see Elijah again. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He also took up the coat of Elijah that had fallen from him, and he went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the coat of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the waters and said, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he had also struck the waters, they were divided here and there, and Elisha crossed over. The word of God for the people of God. The gospel lesson today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. Listen for the still-speaking words of Christ. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up to a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. God is still speaking. Spread the good news. Friends, won't you pray with me? Holy One, giver of power, and of light. 
teach us your ways and give us ears to hear your invitation for us this day. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, the spirit in this place be pleasing and acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Friends, our text this week almost read a little bit like a superhero story. Right? The climb up the mountain, the ha ah, that happens, the overwhelming transformation of showing the revealing of the superhero. Is Jesus a superhero? Yes and no. It's a little bit like perhaps the friends on a quest in J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Going on a quest to save their people. Peter, James, and John might not know that that's what they're doing. But it's what they're doing. So they travel up this mountain and see the Lord transfigured. I'm going to come back to that because I want to talk a little bit about the Elijah and Elisha story. Because here, too, there's this great display of power. Initially, it starts out with Elijah going on and saying where he has to go, and Elisha saying, don't go, or I'll come with you. Reminded me a little bit of Naomi and Ruth. Pretty much where Ruth says, where you go, I will go. Elisha is saying, where you are, Elijah, I will be there. I have that commitment. And deep down he's going, because I don't want you to go. I don't want it to fall to me. So he follows Elijah. And the Spirit of God, in fact, his, his uh, prophet colleagues are saying, don't you know that your teacher's going to be taken away from you today? And Elisha pretty much says, I don't want to talk about it. Let's not, let's not go there. And so he continues on in, in this quest, but continuing to follow Elijah. And he prays for a double portion. Right? Make it a double, he says. He wants to make sure that he has what it takes. If he's going to be left, he wants to make sure he has what it takes. And Elijah says, if you see me taken away, then you will receive it. And indeed, he does see Elijah taken up in a whirlwind, the chariots of fire dividing the two of them. And it's as if he basically is not able to keep watching after his teacher. It's like looking at the sun, that if he continues to do it, he will go blind. He now, in many respects, like I mentioned about the Tolkien situation, he's got the ring. Power is seductive. Is he going to use it for good? Or is it going to become my precious? And use it for self-seeking things. There's a bit in this story that I found myself saying, yes, it's about power and light. But they're also about stealing up our nerve, and confirming our call. We see that in Elijah and Elisha, where he basically, like I said, prays for this double portion so that he can have the nerves that he needs, steeled up, shored up, that he's not so terrified. In fact, he 
grieves the loss of his teacher, but then he does pick up his coat, his mantle, and he does the exact same things that Elijah did with it as far as parting waters, not only so that he knows that he has received this power, but so that the other prophets see that he has been given the Spirit as well. The same is similar with our gospel lesson today. You see, right before the transfiguration story, which often happens, always happens this week, right before the Lenten season begins, we have the disciples going on going away with Jesus up to the mountaintop. Again, the mountain being very important to the Hebrew people. It's where God speaks and it's where God is found. So they know that something is going to happen here. But we didn't read, and I want you to make special note, that right before this passage in Mark's Gospel, Jesus is saying and predicting the suffering and torture he's going to have to go through. That he will suffer and die. In fact, Peter is basically saying, oh no, that's not going to happen. And Jesus says, get behind me. Follow me and stop trying to be the boss. Jesus also then turns to the other disciples. And at this point is where he says, whoever follows me must take up his cross and follow. If you want to be my disciple, you have to be ready to lose your life for my sake. A little bit like Pastor Scott said last week, sign me up for that. It's not something that we all want to do. But there is in this passage this invitation of things are getting real. And it's not happy, happy, joy, joy. And it's not going to be the type of thing that people are going to flock to because of all of the goodness. Even though there's goodness there, there's going to be hardship. Even greater than the climbing the mountain, even greater than the quest from Bethel to Jericho to the Jordan. And so we have Peter, James, and John with Jesus on this mountaintop, and we're told that Jesus, a bright light comes, and he is in the clouds, basically surrounded by this light. And there with him are Elijah and Moses, great leaders in the church, great leaders to the Hebrew people. And in many respects, it's a conferring and a confirming of Jesus is the Messiah. In Mark's gospel, where did we hear this before, this sound from the heaven that said, this is my son? We heard it at Jesus' baptism. He comes up out of the water, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And then in Mark's gospel, we're told he's driven out into the wilderness. There's this confirmation that happens, this conferring of power that happens right before some pretty tough stuff. The trials and tribulations that Jesus experiences in the desert of whom we follow into that wilderness place during Lent. But also here, right before he's in this process of Prediction and telling that he is going to suffer and die and rise again. But that this journey isn't easy. We hear, this is my son. Listen to him. It's this confirming of who Jesus is and who we follow. 
So when it sounds ridiculous, we have the story of confirmation. When it sounds like, don't talk like that, pretty much Elisha says. Don't talk like that, Peter says. We don't want to hear it. La, 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 la. But God is saying, this is the call and this is the path. He's right. It's not crazy. It's true. We basically have in this the predictions of Jesus' resurrection. So it is a story of hope. We have in this story, even in all the adversity, even with Elisha, it's a story of hope. But it's also this invitation for us as we come into the Lenten season of what is it that we are ready for? Who are our mentors, but also who are those whom we mentor? Where in your life... Did you not want somebody to go? Because now you would have to take up that path and do their work. Are there those who are looking to you who maybe aren't quite ready to take up their place? In closing, I just want to simply share a reading uh, from Jan Richardson. She shares a blessing of Elijah. But before that, she says, whether or not we are ordained, we are part of a lineage. We are here because someone, most likely many someones, told us a story that compelled us and called us to follow in the way of Christ. I offer gratitude for those who told the story to me who lived the story for me and who continued to provide strength and sustenance and guidance for my path. I offer prayers for those exploring a call to ministry and those newly entering ministry. For all of us, whatever shape our ministry takes, I offer this blessing in the hopes that we will take up the mantle again and again, claiming it anew, and walking with wisdom and hope, telling the story as we go. So I share this blessing of Elijah, not just for those of you who are called to ordained ministry, but to all of us who are called to the ministry of the gospel. Make no mistake, this blessing that comes like hands laid upon your head, a mantle draped across your shoulders, you do not bear it alone. Think of it as lineage, as litany, an ancient legacy entered, entwining you among the strands that weave through generations and centuries, that spiral with the enduring and determined grace of the story that has seized you and the one who has claimed you and called you. Take heart that this blessing comes to you singed and scorched, signed by the blazing of wonders you can barely imagine, and by trials that have already tested you, or what you would not have found your way this far. Lay it down, and it will be a path for you, across terrain you never imagined daring to cross. Take it up, and know the presence of those who have passed this on to you, who encompass you, who enfold you, who go with you and release you into the keeping of the road that is your own, and the one who has called your name. 
You see, we can't always keep and cling to those who have made our paths. But they do go with us. We can't always walk their particular steps. Perhaps our feet aren't the same size. The terrain might look different. But we go forward in our own path with them at our backs, at our sides, in our hearts. standing on their shoulders with others standing on ours. May we, my friends, go from this time renewed by power and light. These stories of God's voice heard again. For we are entering a wilderness time in Lent. But we go through it because of the hope on the other side. Go through it, because God is still God, faithful through all the terrains, faithful through all the struggles, and brings us joy and hope and new life through it all. Amen. As we come to our time of prayers of the people, just a simple reminder that we are a praying community. We want to be praying with you. Please let us know of your prayer requests and your celebrations by using our online prayer request form, by contacting the church office by phone or email. We will then share those requests and celebrations and updates with our prayer team and our prayer chain so that we can be praying with you for you this week. Let us pray. 
O oh God, as your son drew apart to be in prayer with you, we offer our prayers for the transformation of the world and the church. Radiant God, source of light, as you surrounded Jesus with your glory, so you come to us in penetrating brightness. You catch us off guard and expose our weakness. We choose the limelight while you call us to explore the shadows and to brighten the darkness. We seek the spectacular while you bind up the broken in countless acts of mercy. We seek to stay on the mountain or in the comfort of our own homes while you walk to the valleys of need. Radiant God, fill us with light and courage to carry good news into all the corners of the world and to bring back the joy of your presence. You revealed your glory and presence in your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ. In receiving our prayers, reveal the glory and presence of your Spirit alive in the world today. Free us from all doubts and empower us to act as a transfigured people. For your sake for your glory. May it be so. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer of our Savior, using whatever words are most familiar to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou art the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The social justice team is forming a multiracial, multicultural team that so far includes Declan Flederjohn, Bethany Swieger, Pat Greenewald, and Bonnie Cox. New and aspiring team members are welcome. This initiative hopes to educate and involve the congregation in making Colonial Park UCC more welcoming by educating ourselves on the causes of racism and cultural bias. We hope to offer classes, films, and newsletter articles on the topic. We have already scheduled two activities for April. On April 8th, we will have a book discussion via Zoom on the National Book Award winner, Between the World and Me, by Tanishi Coates. In this book, a father educates his son on growing up as a black man. Contact Bonnie Cox if you are interested. Between April 5th and 24th, the YWCA will sponsor the annual Race Against Racism. It's a 5K virtual race. Included this year will be a 21-day racial equality and social justice challenge where participants will receive daily emails on building more effective social justice habits. Registration information is in the bulletin announcements. Peter offered to build a tabernacle on the mountain with Jesus, but God does not dwell in houses made with human hands. Let us offer ourselves in service to those God loves. Let us offer our sacrifices to build community, bring peace, and be a double blessing to those in need throughout the world. Amen. Please remember that while the church building may be closed, our resources are still used and bills need to be paid. Your faithful contributions support the ministry and outreach of this congregation and the wider church. 
Your financial support may be offered by check and mailed to CPUCC or online at cpucc.org or through electronic fund transfer by contacting your bank or the church office. Thank you for your generosity. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. With these gifts, we proclaim not ourselves, but Jesus, and commit ourselves to follow a way that leads to love and life. May our sacrifices be witness to our love for each other and the God who loves us all. Amen. Where I
like home. I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And all through the night, I'm gonna let it shine. All through the night, I'm gonna let it shine. All through the Friends, go now and speak of what you have seen of God's glory. Do not cling to the holy moments when heaven overshadows you. But as the Lord lives, listen to Christ and follow him from the places of revelation to the places of mission. And may God shine the light of glory into your hearts. May Christ be with you and never leave you. And may the Spirit renew the image of God within you. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>